Okay, thank you for joining in again. So we'll be live very soon. Yeah, my apologies again for this morning. There was some hiccup with my audio. It happens, it happens. Jackie, yes, it happens. <laughs> nice to see you all and thanks for coming in. In the meantime, there's been some more news coming and so we got something hot off the press thanks to Kathy Adams. So that's all fine. So if you have any striking news, just send them to info at zassemedia.com. We'll be happy to take it along. Hi, Christy, I can see you all. That's wonderful. At least in the chat, I see you, see you all. Um, so in future, I will always, or we'll always be broadcasting at this time, simply because it's just better. In the morning, there's so many things to do. And that's what happened this morning. There were audio hiccups. It's not good for anybody. So uh, it's much better to do this at regular times, 5 p.m. Pacific or 8 p.m. Eastern time. I think that is 7 p.m. Central, if I'm correct. Yes. Amanda. Hello. Welcome, Amanda. And hello, Christy. Very nice that I can chat a bit. And Pascal Ragon. Very nice. We'll have some European news for you too, Pascal. Very nice. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Mac Lady. Uh, it's wonderful to greet you all before we get going. This is the advantage of not having a very formal news channel that I can actually greet you behind the scenes before we start. <laughs> I tried to send a video on Dale Hollow, but I don't know if it worked. Jackie, I don't know. We will check. That's great. If you, uh, you know, if you send anything. Okay, we're going to be live in 40 seconds, so I will be quiet now. Except for Osprey, Mama's also here. Okay, live in 30 seconds. Very nice to see you. Good evening and welcome to another event here, another news channel. This time we are going to broadcast uh, Monday and Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific time and that is 8 p.m. Eastern time. So first, some hot news off the press. My name is Christian Zasse. I do Zasse Photo together with my team, which I will show you right at the end, the acknowledgement. First, something off, hot off the press from Kathy Adams. Thank you, Kathy, for sending this. So this goes back to the big bear nest, which you surely know. They had a sad event. They've had very strong winds there and uh, uh, snowstorms and rain. So one of the eaglets died, which prompted the Wildlife and Rescue Organization to go in today and to take remove the dead eaglet from the nest and to also ban the other eagle. Here are some more pictures that you can look quite fantastic. So this just happened today. Thank you very much to Kathy for sending this in. And here we jump again to the news. So we had hatches, as I already mentioned this morning, we had hatches at Fort St. Vrain, and that's the third eagle hatch already, fantastic. There was another eagle uh, egg laid in Mouse City. Very nice. Okay, sorry, I just thought there was uh, was a, a, another disturbance, but it, uh, I think everything is, is working fine today. Before we do that, I will just jump quickly to some international news. And that was what I was trying to show you this morning. So let me just put this on the large screen. This is about a rescue of a, of a golden eagle. And very interesting because golden eagles, as you know, are very strong and powerful. But um, the um, you know the, the to to be crashed by a car is something that is difficult for any any raptor.
seven foot wingspan, it can take down any deer, antelope, even wolves, but our largest raptor can't survive a car collision. Penny Preston reports one eagle did survive in Cody and was set free by the couple who rescued her. This time of year, deer graze on new green grass next to roads or cross highways at dusk and dawn. And they often get hit by drivers who don't see them until it's too late. And then there can be another victim, like this one. A golden eagle that grabs a free meal on the roadside carcass, then gets hit when it tries to fly away. This couple from Belfry, Montana, saw it happen as they drove to Cody in January. The eagle was off to the side with a roadkill and it flew up and this truck that was in front of us hit it. Terry Wheeler says the truck truck didn't stop, but she and her husband did. My husband got out and went over and caught the eagle. They took the eagle to a raptor rehabilitator in Cody. She was just an extremely beautiful bird. Big bird. Huge. She was 13 and a half pounds when I got her. Susan A. Holt says she gets more than a dozen eagles to rehabilitate every winter, most of them hit by cars. If they're eating on a roadkill on the side, they just cannot get out of the way when a car comes blasting towards them at 70 miles an hour. We've been studying golden eagles in the Bighorn Basin here now for, this is our 10th year. Dr. Charles Preston says eagles are killed by passing cars more than... people know. And it's not just about the golden eagle, it's also a human safety hazard as well, because the golden eagle can come right through your windshield if you hit it hard enough. This golden eagle got a second chance. Ahalt says her broken leg healed, and before she was released, Preston put numbered bands on her legs so researchers can study her movements. She may be spotted near where the wheelers found her. They got to open her cage and watch her fly away. It made me cry almost. It's like so amazing watching her fly off like that. Ahalt says this eagle may find her mate. They mate for life, and if her mate is, if she has one, will still be in the same area, probably wondering where she was, but in the same area, waiting for her. From near the Wyoming-Montana state line, Penny Preston, News 13. Dr. Preston is creating a Golden Eagle exhibit that will open at the Draper Natural History Museum in June. Dr. Preston is Penny Preston's husband. Right, so that is a very beautiful event. Let me just close this window to make sure that there is not going to be any repercussions. Uh, I just saw some news here that I just want to announce. Uh, Janet has just said that there was a second egg laid in Washington DC. Thank you Janet for that update. Isn't it wonderful to have the audience give feedback that we can include. Thank you Janet. So now we jump to the next news that is unfortunately less pleasant but very important to follow. So these are feds offering a reward in New Mexico about an eagle shot dead. 80,000 pounds versus 5,000 pounds. Guess who wins? When an yeah, sorry, there's just the car, a, a, a commercial. Can't get around that. If you or a loved one has been in a wreck with a commercial vehicle, call now and put our team to work for Good you. Lord. Okay, who would do something like this? Federal authorities are trying to find out who shot two eagles on the Navajo Nation. According to the Farmington Daily Times, a bald eagle and a golden eagle were found shot in different areas this month with their tail feathers removed. The bald eagle died, and the golden eagle had to have part of its wing amputated. Both of those birds are protected by federal law. 80,000 pounds versus 5,000 pounds. Guess who wins when an 18-wheeler hits a car? The result... Okay, that's good. Now I could get rid of... Oh, sorry. Here we go to the next news. I could finally avoid this feedback. So this is about Harper the Golden Eagle tracking update, which is quite remarkable. So what they did here is they put a solar powered tracker on a Golden Eagle. These trackers are getting smaller and smaller. And why this is important is to understand the migrational behavior of eagles and raptors in general. And I, last week I was already referring to the Audubon Society who have published a report that is peer reviewed by many scientists on the migrational behavior of 
raptors and birds in general in North America as the climate changes. So this tracking is becoming more and more important to understand uh, whether their population is increasing and how well they are actually doing. So do follow this. This is um, this is in Louisville, Kentucky, and this golden eagle has passed through Indiana, Illinois, and all the way to Wisconsin and went into Canada already. Really wonderful news. And now the next point, this is quite interesting. That is a hawk getting stuck in a vehicle grill in Lancaster County. Can you believe that? So that's Pennsylvania. What happened there is that was a driver and he was fortunately good enough to stop immediately and try and rescue the hawk. So he phoned the authorities, but in the meantime, the hawk freed itself and flew away. So that was just wonderful. Next one, and now this is going back to Crow in in southwest Florida. Well, there was uh, there is an osprey nest, and uh, you can go to the Clinic of uh, for Rehabilitation and Wildlife on Facebook, and you can see the story there. So yesterday, one of the adults was taken down from the nest because they were worried that there was a fishing line caught within, I think it was the wings, and they found the raptor to be okay, and they brought it back in a bucket truck and released it. As you know, ospreys can be quite aggressive, so this has to be handled with care. Very different to eagles, ospreys get extremely aggressive about protecting their nests. And this is another interesting story talking about aggression. Uh, we are now going to uh, Fairfield, Connecticut, where there has been, uh, p uh, where police has been warning the public about a hawk attacking. Even some neighbors have been attacked in their yards by this hawk. That can happen typically when they nest in urban areas. And these type of conflicts, especially with hawks, are getting quite, well, they're, they're, they're getting normal because at the same time the raptors are trying to, uh, um, to, to uh, protect their own territory whilst they are nesting. And here we come to Australia. That's where I will be next week, or in, yeah, actually in, in, um, in about 10 days. And it's quite interesting. They have these beautiful wedge-tail eagles. You may remember David Hancock talking about the wedge-tail eagle in Australia. And they have attacked drones. Yes, they have attacked drones. So this is both a hazard to the raptor as well as it is to the person who who uh, is, is um, the owner of the drone. So one has to be exceptionally careful. Uh, eagles don't like drones and one should keep away from wildlife if one doesn't understand the behavior of raptors. There are people who do understand the behaviors. You go to Professor Bird. He does it professionally, by the way. He is, uh, he is a Professor Emeritus from uh, McGill University and you will see him flying drones and watching wildlife with big skill, but that is because he knows what he's doing. And this is also fresh off the press today. Very nice. Uh, brings us back to the Midlands. I used to live in England in the Midlands. And this is on the East Midlands. I used to live in the West Midlands. The Rutland Osprey pair lays earliest eggs uh, ever. So they're very happy to see the uh, evolution there and the um, the, the, the good health of ospreys there. Last year, this osprey pair laid four eggs, quite remarkable. And this is the first egg of the season, and it is earlier than ever. Really wonderful. And finally, some incredibly funny thing here from the BBC. So let me just make sure I switch my microphone back on. And just enjoy this. What people do with an owl in a church to, well, to supply the wedding rings. Here we go. <laughs> oh, 
oh, don't you just love that? Isn't that absolutely wonderful to see such, um, you know, this, this is the way we should interact with wildlife. I absolutely love it. Thanks, Nicole, for, for finding that. So now I'll show you some pictures from some of the nests quickly. Let me just find it. Here we are. So let's go there now. Okay, so um, this I already mentioned, and here is Fort St. Vrain. You can see that is the third uh, eaglet that has um, hatched on the 27th of March, so that is yesterday, yesterday evening it hatched. And some lovely news from the berry nest. They are, of course, delighted that their eaglet is doing so well. You know that one of them passed away, and they hope that it'll get its pilot license very soon. And here's another picture from Mumberry taken from Melanie. Really beautiful. Very beautiful when one gets this incredible shot. Probably taken as it leaves the nest. That's what I, what I think, because that's the moment you, you wait for when your camera is sharp. So I... I presume that's what happened. Another one from Gina. Gina certainly has her way of doing photography. And you can see a very different look and location from Pa Berry. Very nice. And another one from the Berry College Eagles from Bill. We know Bill very well. I have observed Ma Berry for countless hours and have photographed her thousands of times. But what I saw this evening just floored me. She raised her her bad talent. Oh, yes and just stared at it for the longest. Oh, isn't that wonderful? And they want to know, and he wants to know, what has she been thinking? Isn't that just marvelous? <laughs> and Dale Hollow, yes. Um, yeah, if you find anything on Dale Hollow, please send it, but that's DH5 with a full crop there from uh, at, at the Dale Hollow, Northeast Florida. Of course, these two are doing marvelously, Sky and Spirit. That is Gretchen who looks after this nest, and it's really, Great to see how the how they are evolving there. The sauces nest also um, sauces peanut all by itself on top of the hill. Anytime mum's tea kettle goes off, so does peanuts. Very nice, really beautiful. Oh my goodness! And then we jump to Stanley Lakes. Can you believe it? What it looked like yesterday? That is absolutely depressing, if you ask me. It's always remarkable. I mean, I could also see that in Dutch Harbor. Uh, eagles are so tough, but it's time they get a little bit of spring weather there. And from Southwest, you've seen Desiree's pictures, uh, and uh, another one from Southwest. So that was when M15. You saw that yesterday. Brought some food to eat 10 and 11 i believe it was and um, now they're sitting together perched there and doing very well it'll be very interesting to see when they when they leave uh, on and go on their journey and another one from southwest florida that's a beautiful one for here from robert saying harriet watched m15 fly by god i love the face she sure looks smitten with him to me. Yes, she does. <laughs> he does, sorry, he does. He certainly does. And, and this is another one from Paul Webster. You remember the Webster nest, the Texas nest. Beautiful nest here. And you can see how well they are doing. Really nice to see that. They have branched and they should fledge very soon. So, yes, and then finally the team again. Thank you to Nicole, Suzanne, Jenny and Donna Bella for all the help. And I just wanted to show you my Patreon page very quickly. Let's just, let me just blend this in. One second. Let's see if I can do this. Um, there we, no, that, it doesn't, no, it doesn't seem to work. It doesn't want to work for some reason. I don't know why. But it's, it's okay. It's not, um, it doesn't seem to blend in at the moment. Hmm. That's funny, isn't it? Uh, so, something is stuck here, but it's okay. Oh, there we are. Now, now it worked. Sorry. Here we go. It worked. So what I wanted to tell you, have a look at the Patreon page. I have made it even more interesting. As I said, for $2, you can get a beautiful National Geographic type picture already, $2 per month. But the reward structure goes up and up and gets more and more interesting. So I can see some of the some of the very special guests are here who are watching. So if you go from $15, $30 and more, you will get incredible rewards. Have a look. I can, I can assure you this is quite unique on Patreon, the reward structure. So I do hope that you'll be able to support 
us in one way or another. And uh, that certainly, uh, you know, that is certainly most welcome. You can see I have a new camera. I am um, this morning, the colors didn't quite look right. So I put a little, a little bit of color to myself. <laughs> I hope that looks a bit better. Anyway, it's very exciting. I'm glad uh, this time everything worked very well. So I would just like to finally um, jump back to the page. Let me just see if I can do that. Yeah, here we go. So do remember that on Friday, March the 30th, again, same time as today, we're going to have something very interesting from Haynes. We're going to talk to the American Eagle Foundation in Haynes about lead poisoning. I've been at the American Eagle Foundation in Haynes a few years ago. That's when I started my photography and did some of my, uh, started my beautiful images. So Haynes is a, is a great place to visit. So let's listen to them and you are cordially invited on uh, March the 30th, I hope you can join. And on that, on that note, have a wonderful time. And um, I'll hope to see you on Friday. And glad that everything ve went very well. Yes, Stormy got banded today at Big Bear. That is absolutely correct, AHE9. I was reporting on that. That was already Kathy who brought in that news. You're absolutely right. I can see MSO, Amanda, Jackie, Osprey. And thank you to, to all of you for watching. Thank you for your kind comments, your support. I so appreciate that. We also uh, appreciate that. That's what we live from. And we will continue to get stronger and better every day. Thank you.